Olivia, may I have a word with you? Yes, Brittany. What is it? You need to be more considerate of those around you. Huh? What do you mean all of a sudden? I mean exactly what I said. I guess you don't realize how bad you are at housework. You see what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Because you don't do your part? Poor Paul has to suffer. I'm sorry. I thought I was doing my best. Oh my! Paul has never praised you, has he? Well... That's all your fault too. The reason he doesn't defend you. I don't think that's true. I believe Paul appreciates me even if he doesn't say it. What? How presumptuous. You're just not trying hard enough. You need to get it together. Right. I really feel sorry for my son. If you were more careful, we could have been a better family. Too bad. I'll work harder from now on and make a home Paul can be happy with. Don't forget those words. Yes. For example, the way you fold the laundry is so sloppy. Paul has a demanding sales job, you know. Have you ever thought about that? You're right. I'll be more careful. And when he gets home from work, the house should be a relaxing environment, don't you think? With your cooking too, you need to put in more effort for balanced nutrition. At the very least, you should master his favorite dishes. That's a wife's duty. I understand. Also, socialize with the relatives more often. As part of this family, it's expected. I don't know if you're shy or what, but you are not a child. You're right. I'm sorry. It seems like the neighbors don't have a good impression of us either. Even them? You really need to be more self-aware and put in the effort. Yes. Olivia, are you truly remorseful with that attitude? Paul is too kind to really criticize you, but you need to realize just how inconsiderate you're being. Sorry. For my son's sake, you need to be a better wife. If you don't get your act together, our entire family's reputation will suffer. I'll be more mindful. Do you remember me? What an inconsiderate, unmannerly daughter-in-law you are. Uh huh, Brittany. It's been a long time. How dare you? There's a way to speak to your mother-in-law. I'm simply stating facts. It's been five years since you stopped associating with the relatives, hasn't it? A long time, but also not that long. This time, you'll have no choice but to live with us again. So, when will you be moving back here? Brittany, it's been a while. But no... You're not my mother-in-law anymore. What are you talking about? How presumptuous of a daughter-in-law. Huh? Um, I'm no longer in a position to have anything to do with you. What do you mean? At a time when your husband is in serious trouble? Serious trouble? Well, I'd be shocked too if my husband's affair came out. But... A wife must stay strong. You have to tolerate your husband's infidelity. No, um... No. Do you realize how much we've struggled while you were gone? My son has been anguished because of you. Suffering? Yes. It's irresponsible for you to abandon your family over your husband's affair. You should be supporting him. Supporting him? Yes, marriage is about overcoming difficulties together. You have no sense of family responsibility. But I've already... I don't want to hear excuses. Come back immediately and fulfill your family duty. 
but... Don't butt me. Have you considered how much my son has suffered while you're gone? No, it's... It's really pathetic. How pitiful that my son has a wife like you. That's harsh. It's embarrassing you were ever part of this family. Embarrassing? Yes, be more self-aware. Understood. But, Brittany, we've already... Let me say it again. You need to come back and support my son. That's your duty. That's enough. Yes, you have that responsibility. You need to move in now. It's your duty as a family. Responsibility? That's right. But, Brittany, we've already divorced. Divorced? I don't believe that. It's been five years. What? My son never told me. We've gone our separate ways. You are still responsible for him. But I am no longer in a position to be involved. Of course you are. You were family. But I have a new life now. A new life? That's irrelevant. I'm sorry, but I can't discuss this further. How pitiful that my son has a wife like you deserting him. You see, Paul and I are already divorced. I understand wanting a divorce, but that's no good. Even if you say no, we don't have feelings for each other. I don't think I want to get back together too. You're abandoning Paul? Abandon? Divorcing now would ruin your reputation too, you know. Excuse me? My son is in a wheelchair because of the accident. And as a wife, you are going to take care of him. Huh? That's what married couples do. Wait, you said he is in a wheelchair from an accident? This is the first time I'm hearing of it. Huh? Oh, so that's it. He came back home alone so he wouldn't worry you. No, um... What a kind boy. To think of others even badly disabled himself. Yet you, his wife, never even visited him in the hospital. You cold-blooded person. Heartless wretch. We've gone our separate ways. I think we should respect his new life. I won't accept that. You're just running away. I'm not running. I just... I don't want excuses. If you abandon him, I won't forgive you. It's not about forgiving. We're no longer involved. You were part of this family. Please, let me explain fully. There seems to be some misunderstanding and missing information. Misunderstanding? Missing information? What is it? First of all, the affair you mentioned was over five years ago, when Paul and I divorced. Huh? It's not that you don't want a divorce. It had already happened years ago. Yes, that's right. After our divorce, I heard he remarried the woman he had the affair with. I beg your pardon? So I haven't seen or heard about him in five years. Until speaking with you now about his wheelchair situation, which is very unfortunate. But given that background, Paul and I are already separate people, living different lives. I don't think he would want me caring for him now. I haven't heard any of that. It seems so, but it's the truth. No, you're lying. Huh? Five years ago was around when you cut off all ties with Paul's family. After that, he only came to family events by himself. Exactly, because we had divorced. Shut up! You're just making up obvious lies because you don't want to care for your wheelchair-bound husband. I'm not lying. You can check our records. Like, I'll waste my time believing a lying wife? Yeah. Anyway, you need to move back here and live with us immediately. Of course, you'll keep working since he camped for a while. 
We'll rely on you to support us. And we'll need to renovate the house to be wheelchair accessible. All those costs will be on you. This is all ridiculous. How dare you abandon my son when he needs you? Please confirm the truth with him. Even if you don't believe me, I'm only stating facts. Excuse me. Where are you going? This conversation isn't over. I won't continue this pointless discussion any further. Pointless? You really are heartless. Whether I seem heartless is your own emotional issue. I've only stated facts. You're not seeing reality. Fulfill your family duty. What duty? We've legally severed ties. Legal ties may be cut, but not emotional ones. That's your view. We chose separate lives. While my son suffers, you'll do nothing? Which is why I ask you confirm the facts for his sake too. Now if you'll excuse me. Olivia, I need to ask you something. What about your job? You need to work steadily or you'll struggle financially going forward. Huh? What do you mean? Always playing dumb. You quit your job, didn't you? Just last month, they said. What? Did you contact my workplace? I went there in person. When I asked to see you at the reception, they said you had resigned. As the wife who will need to support Paul from now on, what were you thinking, you fool? This again. How can I get you to believe we're divorced? You could just ask your son and know the truth. Ugh. You bring up such a foul mood when I mention it. I bet Paul is afraid the breadwinner abandoned him. Oh, poor Paul. That's why you need to come live with us immediately. And I can't believe you just quit your job. By the way, I heard you contacted my parents. They gave you the same answer as I did, but you didn't believe them. Instead, you yelled at them. Enough blabbering. Start preparing to move in and find a new job immediately. As the ex-wife, you'll care for our wheelchair-bound son for life. Not like you could remarry anyway. My remarriage prospects are none of your business. My life is mine to decide. I feel even more sorry for my son. Try to understand how your irresponsibility hurts him. Who's being irresponsible? I made the decision to take back my life. That doesn't mean abandoning the family. Our bond as a family should be mutually respected. I have continued to respect it. But that respect was not reciprocated. I can't believe this. Let me explain. I quit my job to follow my new husband's career relocation. What? New husband? Paul hasn't relocated. He had to quit after the accident. That's not what I meant. I mean, I've remarried. Huh? Remarried? Yes. My current husband is in a job that requires frequent relocating over the next decade or so. So I chose to work remotely. Understand? What the hell? So, you're the one who cheated? I'll sue you for damages. Be prepared. You know, Brittany, I met my new husband through matchmaking a year after divorcing Paul. So how does that make sense? You're just telling convenient lies. A divorce now would clearly mean abandoning your wheelchair-bound husband. When did the accident happen? Six months ago. Our divorce was five years before that, so I have zero reason to be involved now, right? Of course not. When he got into the accident, he said his wife caught him cheating. So he fled with a mistress by car, driving too fast and crashing. Actually, I didn't witness any affair. I hired a private investigator to uncover his cheating. What? 
If you want, I can show you the investigation report from that time. Wait. So what was Paul talking about? Well, could he have cheated again after remarrying? Huh? He might be talking about his current wife. Wait, what? Anyway, you have to clarify everything with Paul. If you keep harassing me, I'll explore legal options. Excuse me. Just a moment. This isn't over. The conclusion won't change. Paul wouldn't do such a thing. You're mistaken. Then you should check with him yourself. Our issues are settled. I can't believe my son cheated again. Whether you believe it depends on his actions. So look into what he did properly. It's hard to take your word for it. Review the investigation report. It shows the truth. To avoid further misunderstanding, I'll excuse myself now. I'm sorry to keep messaging you, but I really need to discuss something with you. I'll be brief. Can you spare some time? I don't have anything to talk with you. I understand if you feel our discussions are over, but please hear me out. What is it? Paul finally told me everything. I see. So you understand now that what I've been saying is the truth? Yes, I suppose so. He didn't want me to know that his affair caused your divorce. That's why he claimed you grew distant from the family because you disliked associating with them. He also couldn't admit that he remarried his affair partner back then. I see. But then he cheated again with someone else, causing that accident. As his mother, I had to find out the truth about him cheating in the accident with a mistress. I understand. Now that you do, that's all I needed. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. This is the main point. What is it? Would you consider reconciling with Paul? What? You said you work remotely now, meaning you're always home. You are in the perfect environment to take care of him. You loved each other once, and your current marriage was arranged. So ending it may be easier than a love match. His affair partner is out of the picture, too. You and Paul could start over again. Who are you to say that? What? First of all, it was your constant nagging as a mother-in-law that first made me consider divorce. Me? Not just in person. Endless needling, phone calls, texts, emails, a barrage of snide remarks, and insults I'll never forget. I didn't mean to. Anyway, I have no intention of divorcing my current husband, so leave me alone. Wait, I apologize for any grief I cost you, but please, help us. I didn't know he was troubled even after remarrying. We're both in very difficult situations now. We need your help. Please don't abandon us. That's impossible. I can't go back to the past. I'm remarried now. Please do not contact me again. Goodbye. That whole incident was entirely due to my former mother-in-law acting on her own. She was desperately trying to make me take care of Paul again. But it was all based on her own misguided assumptions. When Paul found out what she had done, I heard he really laid into her. I wish she would reflect on how her selfish actions caused so many problems for him. After that, Brittany and Paul were left with no money, forcing them into a life of poverty together. She had to downgrade to a tiny apartment, severely cutting expenses while supporting his needs. Well, it's got nothing to do with me anymore. I am living a peaceful and happy life with my current husband. By choosing my own path, I was able to regain inner peace. Hello there. Sorry for the sudden contact. Are you Frank's wife? Yes, I am. Who is this? Actually, I'm dating your husband. My name is Amber. 
Seriously, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Didn't Frank tell you? I told him to talk to you properly. Honestly speaking, I haven't heard anything from him. Are you saying that my husband is having an affair with you? I don't think it's an affair anyway. Why do you think so? Because Frank and I really love each other, so it's definitely not an affair. Well, in the eyes of the general public, it may be seen as some sort of cheating. I'm sorry about that. Well, what do you want from me then? I have nothing to say to you. By the way, are you aware how risky it is for you to contact me like this? Of course I do, but I still have to contact you since you're Frank's current wife. Current wife, huh? Sorry, but I'm confused about a lot of things and there are still some things I haven't caught up on. First, how did you find out about my contact information? Of course I looked at Frank's phone, memorized his ID and searched for it. I did it while he was sleeping. I don't think you should have done that. I mean, you just used his phone without permission and you contacted me recklessly. Anyway, we're prepared to pay you the full amount of the alimony. I can see that you're very well prepared. Excuse me for asking this question, but do you have a job? I'm a receptionist at the company Frank works for. I have some savings. I see. By the way, how much are you planning to pay for the alimony? About $2,000. I think that's more than enough, right? I think you need to revise the amount. What? Are you telling me that you only need less than that? Of course not. I wonder why you don't understand about the correct amount for alimony. But I can see that you're not sorry for what you've done at all. So you mean that the amount is $20,000? Yes, that's right. It depends on the case anyway. That much? That's too much. I have a two-year-old daughter. Your affair with my husband will hurt her feelings badly, too. You have to take into consideration as well. I know you have a young child, but we have a child here, too. Are you kidding me? I can't believe that. You know what? I'm pregnant, and it's Frank's child. Really? Yes, I'm four months pregnant. Oh my god, I can't believe Frank needs you pregnant. I want to give birth to this child and build a happy family with Frank. So please, Julia, please divorce Frank. So I can get married to him. I haven't heard anything from Frank himself. Besides, I have a child to take care of, so I need to check first. Can you give me time to talk with Frank? Of course. I'm sure that he will divorce you. As for the alimony, I would appreciate it if you could give me a small discount. It costs a lot of money to have a baby. That sounds very selfish. I will consult with a legal expert and determine the amount. You must divorce Frank as soon as possible. Before this baby is born. Either way, I don't think it will take that much time, so please don't worry. Now, if you'll excuse me. I had a hunch that Frank was having an affair, but I had no idea that he was having a child. I was still in a daze about how to tell him and greeted him when he came home. When he came home and tried to touch my daughter, I felt a surge of disgust. I realized that I had enough, so I started discussing about divorce. Hello, Amber. Sorry for the delay. Finally, you contacted me. I've been waiting for you. Sorry to keep you waiting. It took a long time. I finally finished the divorce proceedings with Frank. Really? I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Anyway, have you heard anything from Frank yet? I've only met him at work since then, so I haven't heard anything from him. Well, I asked Frank to pay alimony and child support in one lump sum. I've hired a lawyer to complete all the procedures. We are now preparing to file a claim for alimony against you. I can't believe you don't know something as important as this. You're still going to ask for alimony? You were prepared for this, weren't you? 
Of course, I saved up the money so that me and Frank can build a happy family together. I will send the amount to you again by a certified mail. Please follow the instructions and make your payment. By the way, how much is it? Approximately $30,000. What? That's too much. Can you at least make it less? I'm going to have a baby now and I'm sure I'm going to need a lot of things. You have a child yourself, so you understand that, don't you? Of course, I understand that a child costs money, but that's not a different case. I'm not going to give you any discount for alimony. I have a young child, my husband cheated on me, and we're getting divorced. You have robbed the mother and her daughter of their happiness. Please understand that and remorse on what you've done. I understand. I have Frank to support the household income anyway. I think I can manage, so I will pay you the alimony. It must be hard for you now that Frank is no longer your breadwinner, huh? Yes, it is hard. Thank you for your concern. I'm sorry I stole Frank away from you. Why did you go out with him if you knew that he was a married man? You knew the consequences, didn't you? Because I fell in love with him and wanted to be in a serious relationship. Frank said that his wife isn't pretty. He said it over and over again that he'd rather have me since I'm young and pretty. I can't just abandon him, can I? Oh, I see. Julia, you're busy taking care of your child that you got distracted and abandoned your responsibility to take care of yourself as a woman. That's why Frank dumped you. I think it can't be helped. What do you mean? I think you should reconsider that before you find the next person you want to have a date with. Thank you for your advice. My pleasure. The key to happiness is for a woman to always be pretty. I think it would be good for you to keep that in mind. I've never met you, but I'm sure you must be very pretty. Well, I'm a receptionist who works for a major company. I'm sure that I was hired because of my beauty. I see, you must be Frank's favorite type of woman. Do you think so? Frank has been in love with me from the beginning. I'm so happy to think that I'm destined to be loved by him from now on. I hope that your happiness will last for a long time. Julia, thank you so much for divorcing Frank. I hope you'll live a happy life too. Thank you. That's very nice of you. At this time, I was sure that Amber really thought she could be happy. I told my lawyer to request alimony from Julia. She agreed to pay an installment as a lump sum and indeed difficult. Two weeks after the first payment, she learned the truth about Frank. Julia, what on earth is going on? Please contact me now. Please. Amber, what's wrong? Don't pretend that you don't know anything about this. Why doesn't Frank come to me? I don't know, okay, but he already left the house. I thought he went to your place. Please don't lie to me. I know you divorced Frank in order to get a high alimony payment from me. You lied and stayed with him, didn't you? This is a fraud. Are you regretting it now? Please let Frank go as soon as possible. What are you talking about? Frank has moved out of the house. My daughter and I have already moved out too. I don't even know where he is. When he left, Frank said he's going to be with someone he really loves. Didn't he go to your place? I don't even know what happened to him after he left home. Not only did he not come, but I can't talk to him when I see him at work. And I can't contact him. What should I do? Well, looks like the woman Frank loves is not you. What a pity. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Please explain. It's Frank's fault for not informing you properly, isn't it? Actually, he's having affairs with three women, including you. You really didn't know about that? Seriously? You mean he's having affairs with several women at a time? It's unbelievable, isn't it? From the beginning, I had a feeling that he was cheating on me. When I got a call from you and questioned him, he came up with names other than you. When I asked him more, he told me that he was having an affair with three other women, including you. 
Can you believe that? He's such a jerk. I don't think I can do the same thing. Of course, I won't do anything that will hurt others' feelings. Are you really sure about that? Do you think he went to other women's place? But he told me that he loves me. I'm pregnant with this child. I know. Did you tell him about that? I did. I mean, I just said it on the phone. I'm sure he ran away from you. He's a coward. That sucks. If I pay you the alimony, I'll be penniless. What should I do? You promised me to pay the alimony. You also agreed to the amount. You should be thankful that I'm letting you pay in installments. It's none of my business. How are you going to get the money from? What are you talking about? I don't think I should be thankful to you. Let me say it again. I have nothing to do with Frank anymore. From now on, please get in touch with him by yourself. I tried, but he didn't answer my calls. Can you contact him for me? I'm sure he'll listen to you. Please help me. Why should I cooperate with an unfaithful husband who caused my divorce? That's a complete nonsense. But Frank went for another woman. It's not just my fault, don't you think so? Stop talking nonsense. It's your fault too. I'm not saying that I hate you, but I won't cooperate with you even if the world turned upside down. I've suffered enough myself. I have no time to deal with your joke. Please don't say that. If Frank leaves me, how am I supposed to live from now on? No matter what it takes, why don't you just get Frank to admit that he's the father of your child? But he won't contact me. That's why I'm asking you a favor. I don't know what's going on with you guys, but I'm not Frank's wife anymore. I don't want to get involved. You won't help me. I won't be able to pay the alimony if you don't help me. If that happens, you'll be in trouble too, right? Don't worry. I'll do whatever it takes to get my alimony paid. I'll never let you run away from paying the alimony. Please, if I don't do help me, I'll really be all by myself. That's impossible. Julia, we love the same man, right? I regret it so much now, but I don't even want to be reminded of it. Please don't say that. I thought me and Frank were about to get married and have a baby. I quit my job too. So please, at least you must cancel the alimony. I beg you. I can't pay that much by myself. Please transfer the fee to the specified account and the specified amount on the specified date. A promise is a promise. I'm sorry that I'm not a kind person. Oh no! I apologize from the bottom of my heart for having an affair with your husband. Please forgive me. That's not the way to say it. You haven't apologized from the bottom of your heart before, have you? That's not true. I apologize from the bottom of my heart even more than before. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm a victim too. So please reconsider about the amount of alimony. There's no way I'm gonna do that. Please just pay the alimony since I appreciate it more sincerely than your apology. I don't have any money. Please, at least tell Frank somehow. He said that he would come to me. I can't even give birth to his baby at this point. Frank has nothing to do with me anymore. I have no obligation to take care of you that much. Well, I'd be better off now. I wish you a long and happy life. I can't live a happy life in this state. Julia, please. That's because you were having an affair with Frank. I sincerely hope that from now on you won't make the same mistake ever again. Goodbye. In the end, Amber got so desperate that she told everything out loud at the office. She and Frank were both called in by the HR. It seems that all the other women with whom Frank was having an affair were in different departments in the company. Frank is now in a sticky situation. Well, he got what he deserved anyway. I'm going to check with the other partners to see if they knew that I was married to Frank. I'm consulting with a lawyer to see if I should file a claim for alimony. Frank seems to end up together with Amber, who is pregnant with his child. I hope the two of them will do their best from now on. Hey, can I talk to you for a second? I heard you're getting married. Is it true? Yes, it's true. I see. Is it with Andrew? Yeah. 
I knew it. You've been dating since college. What about it? Well, this is kind of hard to say. What? What's wrong? Can you cancel the marriage? I'm sorry. What? Why? You texted me out of nowhere, and what the hell is that? Because I want to marry him. Wait. Um. What do you mean? You mean you liked him too? I'm surprised. Not like I like him. I mean, we are in love with each other. In love with each other. But Andrew is my boyfriend and my fiance. So what? We didn't need a name for our relationship because we love each other, you know. Gabrielle, what are you talking about? I don't understand. You're a peaceful girl, so you probably haven't noticed, but we've been together since college. It's a little too late to tell you this, but you were dating with Andrew. Wait, but I've been with him since college too. In easy words, he was cheating on you. Surprising, huh? Andrew, he was. You're kidding, right? Don't lie to me. There's no way I would say something like this if it was a lie or a joke. I have plenty of proof. We once went on a trip without telling you. He came to my house after your date, and we even spent a night together after seeing you. No way, that's not possible. Andrew would never do such a thing. Believe it or not, it's true. Isn't that frustrating? Isn't it sad? This can't be. You haven't married him yet, right? Then can you give him to me? I think it's better to keep it as a flesh wound. I don't really care if I'm being cheated. Wait a minute, I'm really confused. I'll talk it over with him. That's fine, but you have to come to a decision as soon as possible. I've been putting up with you being the second girlfriend, so at least give him to me in the end. That day we discussed it at his parents' house. His parents were both looking awkward. But he was like, "Oh, you found out," and being happy-go-lucky guy. I realized that we were over. There was no way I could be happy if I married someone like this. In the end, we called off the engagement. A few months later, I heard that he and Gabrielle got married. Hey there, how are you doing? I hope you're happy. Oops, of course you're not. Why not? I'm fine. Oh well, that's good. I have my first child. It's the happiest thing in the world to have a child from someone you love. You can congratulate me by giving me money. Congratulations, but isn't it too brazen to steal your fiance and then beg for a gift of money to celebrate? I've never heard of that case before. Are you still holding on to the past? That was a long time ago. Forget about it. Hey, it's only been a year. I don't think it was that long ago. So what about you? Me. A woman who lost her fiance all alone and lonely. Are you suffering? Is it painful? Oh God! I was so happy that I accidentally told you my updates. Forgive me. Thank you for your concern. I'm super fine. Oh my! Don't pretend to be. If you're lonely, just tell me you're lonely. I'll let you take care of my baby if you want. He's really cute. No, thank you. You're just being stubborn, even though you miss him. But after a year, you've at least got a boyfriend, right? I do have. What's he like? Well, I can imagine without asking. I bet he's not that good. I mean, he's not my boyfriend. We're married. Huh? Married? Yeah. Wait. Did the shock of breaking off the engagement make you crazy? You didn't have to decide so quickly. I'm starting to feel sorry for you. I wasn't in a rush to make a decision, but. My boss heard about the broken engagement and suggested a blind date, and things went on very quickly from there. I'm glad I met someone nice. Your boss introduced you a guy. What kind of nasty, bald, fat old man did he introduce you to? He's a nice guy, around same age as me. Huh? Don't tell me easy lies. You don't have to hide it just because you're embarrassed. A blind date set up by boss at work is just a bald, fat old man who has no one to get him right. He's not bald and he's not fat. Our ages are close too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say love is blind, right? That's how you see him, huh? I'm glad you're happy. To me, you look like a poor girl who got married by compromising. Mind your own business. Leave me alone. No matter how many months have passed, she still has the same personality. I don't want to have anything to do with people like this as much as possible. But just when I was thinking like that, I got unwittingly involved again. There was another text. Hey, 
You married someone from my husband's company? Oh, yeah, right. And the trading company? Yeah, that's right. What about it? Could it be the head of HR? Nah, of course not. But when my husband was saying something bad about you at work, the HR manager came out and said, What's wrong with my wife? So, the manager got it wrong, huh? He's right. He's right? He was telling the truth. My husband is the HR manager at N Trading Company. Seriously? Seriously, he's the human resources manager of N Trading Company? That's what I said. So, what about it? But you, you were introduced to bald fat man by your boss. Why would he be the head of HR? That's just your own interpretation. I told you I married a nice guy around the same age as me. No one said a bald fat man. But that's just your fantasy. How can you be so sure? Don't assume that it was a fantasy. Is it true? Are you serious? Did you really marry the head of HR? That elite nice looking guy? I don't know much about the company, but I fell in love at first sight, so I do think he's cool. You know what I'm talking about. You should tell me that kind of thing first. What? About what? That you married the head of HR. Thanks to you, you embarrassed me. Huh? What kind of embarrassment? Why are you embarrassed? You know, this and that. This and that? I don't understand. There are some circumstances here, too. Oh, the rumor you were saying to your neighbors? My neighbors? What was it? My husband's ex wife was ugly and poor. A woman with no common sense and no education because she grew up with a single parent, right? That's a terrible thing to say. How did you know? I heard. You've been spreading a very bad rumor, haven't you? Oh no, wait! This is misunderstanding! What am I misunderstanding? You said so, didn't you? That's what I heard. Um, what can I say? This is. This is. I'm sorry, it's some kind of mistake, so please don't tell the manager. I don't ever want him to know. That's impossible, because my husband told me this rumor. He knew about it? Yes. When he went to his co worker's house, he heard the rumor from his wife. He corrected her by saying that I'm a beautiful, well educated wife and my parents are educators. That's a little embarrassing for me, you know. As you can see, my husband is very sweet. You are absolutely right. That's the head of HR. That's the manager's wife. Wow, you change your mind really easily. Unbelievable. You can trust me. You never know who's listening, so watch out for your words. You're right. You are indeed the manager's wife. Hey, enough. You're creepy. Will you stop talking like that? I can't. By the way, I have a favor. What? Could you raise my husband's salary or promote him? I don't know anything about his work. It's none of my business. That's not true. The HR manager is a really nice person. I'm sure he'll listen to his wife's suggestion. Since you're a beautiful woman, why don't you support him? It's your job to handle the family finances, isn't it? I am supporting him, but lately his salary has gone down. Oh, I heard he took a pay cut. That must be tough, isn't it? What? He told you? No way. My husband wouldn't tell me personal information like that. I heard from your husband. My husband? What did he tell you? He got a pay cut for having an affair with a receptionist at work. He asked me for help. That's not what I can help with, right? Huh? He had an affair with the receptionist? Having an affair at work is a bad idea. I was speechless when I heard about it. Having an affair with the receptionist? What's that? I didn't hear anything about it. Oh, you didn't? You didn't know? I shouldn't have said this. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. You mean he was cheating on me? I think that's what it means. I don't think it's anything to be surprised about. I'm surprised. There's no way he cheated on me. Damn. Is that something you can say, even though you had been cheating on me for years? From my point of view, you got what you deserved. I was young back then. What goes around comes around. Oh no, this can't be. Anyway, I think you and your husband should talk together. Once again, let me tell you first there's nothing I can do about it. Now, if you'll excuse me. Even though she stole my ex husband, they seem to have a bad relationship. I have mixed feelings about it. Well, it's nothing to do with me now. And yet, she keeps trying to drag me into her mess. I just want her to get me out of her head. We're getting divorced. I see. And I have a favor. A favor? I was wondering if your husband could hire me. I'm looking for a job. Like I told you before, I am not involved in my husband's business. Don't say like that. I am in trouble because my husband kicked me out. I have no money and nowhere to go. Please help me. He kicked you out? Why? 
He's the one to be blamed, right? Um, he found out about my affair too. Huh? You guys are just like each other, aren't you? Don't say we're the same, we're different. You guys are exactly the same. Oh no, please, I have no other choice but to beg you. I'm sorry about the past, I was wrong. So please help me. Let me tell you again, it's none of my business and there's nothing I can do about it. I will not interfere in any way with my husband's business. You'll have to look elsewhere. Well then. Don't say that. Please, 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 please help me. God, please. Mrs. Kate, please. After that, she couldn't give up on divorcing him, so she went to his company and had a fight involving the receptionist with whom he was having an affair. In the end, all three of them were taken away by the police. It's okay that they're just like each other, but I hope they don't cause trouble for others. How many times do I have to tell you, let's just get divorced? Same to you. Then, why don't you just submit the documents? Then we can get divorced right away. How long are you making me wait? I'd like to, but I need things to do first. That's why I can't do it right now. Things to do? Are you talking about money? Yes. I'm not going to change the terms I gave you. I'll have all the joint savings. I won't accept anything else. That's exactly what I am not going to accept. You're saying you cheated on me. You won't pay me anything, but rather give you the savings and then get divorced? Yes. Can you think of something else? How convenient is that? Do you really think that's going to work? Of course it does. If it doesn't work, I'm in trouble. I won't give up on it. Me neither. Why should I give up? Why? It's not like you're suffering for money, so why not? The more you have, the better it is. I'm in more trouble than you are, so you can give it up. That way we can get an amicable divorce. You cheated on me and you want me to forgive you for free? Isn't that too convenient? Absolutely not. You'll have to take responsibility. Why would you do that? I told you I was sorry about the affair. You really are a narrow-minded woman. It's not about I'm broad-minded or narrow-minded. I don't remember you apologizing to me. It was your fault for cheating in the first place, so you'd better make amends. Otherwise, I can't divorce you. Don't be stubborn. Anyway, I won't accept it. My husband never came home after that. Perhaps he is staying with someone he is having an affair with. I don't care, but... We have not been able to make any progress in our talks. He ignores my messages and refuses to answer my calls. This is too much trouble, so I've decided to leave it alone for a while. Hey, how long are you going to make me wait? The document. I haven't filled it out yet. It's been a while. Have you stopped being a spoiled brat? My girlfriend keeps telling me to get divorced. Please submit the paper. Of course, I will. After we're done talking. That's enough. I'll file it on my own. Don't complain afterwards, okay? Without permission? Forging documents? That's a big problem. Because I don't have a choice. You won't submit it. Well, I've told the lawyer not to accept it yet, so even if you forged it, it won't be accepted. You. Why have you done that? Isn't it obvious? Because I don't want us to get divorced without accepting your terms. Did you really think I'd do such a thing? You don't trust me that much? But you were about to do that a few minutes ago. Have you forgotten? Then just go ahead and write it down. How many times do I have to tell you that we need to talk first? What do you want to discuss? I don't have anything to discuss with you. About how you two can make amends. What's your terms? It's not a big deal. We'll split our joint savings exactly in half. Oh, ask your girlfriend how she's going to take her responsibility. I think this is pretty reasonable, isn't it? I need money. We're going to have a baby. Right. Then we need to talk about it even more. You have to follow the rules of society so that you can be a respectable dad to your child. I mean, that's not. We have to raise a kid. Anyway, we need money, so I can't accept those terms. Please, please reconsider. I can't. It's none of my business. I'm not asking a lot. If you can't split it right now, then you can pay me back later. Look, we're getting divorced someday anyway. That's right. The sooner the better. How about we get divorced first and then talk about it? Nope. Are you crazy? Why am I crazy? I don't want you to run away. Running away? There's no way I'm running away. I doubt it. You lied to me and cheated on me. I can't trust you. There is a possibility of you doing it. But it's better to get divorced soon. I don't have to get divorced right away, and I don't need money right now, okay? If you don't accept it, we can go to the court. I don't mind. To the court? You. 
No other choice since we don't agree, right? It's just a difference between taking the case to trial after we live separately or taking it to mediation and then to trial. But that's... It's going to take a long time to settle either way. I wonder how old your child will be when we get divorced. You. You knew everything and you're doing this, you dirty bitch. What? You're doing this knowing we'll be in trouble. If we don't get divorced, I'll be in trouble because of the child's family registration. So you thought if we string this out, I'll agree to your terms. That's why you're doing this. What are you talking about? Will you stop making accusations? I'm not making any unreasonable demands. You need to understand that you're the one who's making them. Damn, I won't forgive you. It was a few days later. Suddenly, I got a call from the landlord. Apparently, my husband's girlfriend was making a mess in front of the apartment. I called the police right away and had them take her away. Why aren't you at home? You called the cops? How are you going to take responsibility if something happens to her? She has a baby. Why don't you tell her that? It's none of my business. She's the one to take the responsibility if something happens. If you'd let her in the house, there wouldn't have been any problem. Can you at least be considerate? Unfortunately, I don't live in that place anymore. What? You moved out? Yes, I did. Why would I live in that house? What are you moving out without permission? That room was originally under my name. Besides, your stuff is gone now that you took it out, right? Even so, I live there too. Yes, you did. The rent was so expensive. You were having an affair with someone and didn't spend any money to her living expense, so I had a hard time making ends meet. If you have a problem with me and want me to keep living in that house, can you pay me all the living expenses you haven't paid? Can I make a formal demand? That's a little... Then don't complain. Oh yes, I found a good lawyer, so let's have a proper meeting soon. I'm sure you'll hear from my lawyer soon. Lawyer, you, hey, please, let's get divorced. We will, as long as you take full responsibility. That's what I've been saying all along. We're going to have a baby. We have to hurry up. Otherwise, we can't make a living. I'll divorce you today if we finish talking. How can we finish talking within today? I'm in a hurry. So what? That's what you get for not following the order, isn't it? None of my business. Please. We're not getting anywhere. Call me when you're ready to accept the terms. Your feelings haven't changed? Nope. Okay, I'll accept your terms. I'll split the savings 50-50 and I'll make her take some kind of responsibility. So please divorce me, is that okay? Okay, and the apology? Huh? Apology for cheating on me. You haven't apologized to me once yet, have you? I've been waiting. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's taking so long for this. It's because you're stubborn. Which one of us is stubborn? You cheated on me. You wouldn't give up your savings. You've been pestering me all day. Do you have any right to say that? I'm sorry. I just wanted to save some money. But from now on, I'll make it right. I'll make amends so that my unborn child won't be ashamed of myself. Please do so. So please, divorce me, please. Understood. Fiona, thank you. I'm really sorry. After that, we talked it over with a lawyer and put into writing. So far, the money in the joint saving has been transferred to my account every month. I've told him that I won't forgive him if he delays even once, so I think he'll be okay. Now I'm going to find someone who will be happy with me this time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.